Well, good morning. It's uh, Sunday, the 11th of May, 2014. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Um, I'm standing out in the uh, part of the field where we have our tall spindle orchard. That's where the apple trees are planted every three feet on rows that are 14 feet apart. And what we're looking at here is the uh, cover crop that I planted last fall. This is a mix of uh, cow peas and oats. Um, so the idea is that the uh, the oats, you can see them maybe, the oats grow up and you've got the peas now that use the oats as trellising so that the peas will stay upright. So this is what the entire field looked like yesterday. Of course there's no apple trees looking this way. We'll continue the planting um, on this end of the field next year. But what I want to show you is what uh, a couple hours with a scythe following that up with a lawnmower can do. Um, did not use a brush hog out, out here. Uh, I used the scythe to um, get everything down to about three or four inches and then I put the lawnmower about as low as it could go and mowed it the rest of the way. And so all the all the cuttings that I took, I've um, heat them up at the base of these apple trees uh, to serve as a source of um, of food for the apple trees. Um, what you really want to do in the beginning here is uh, encourage the apple trees to grow as much as you can, and to do that, you want to give them as much nitrogen as you can. Um, and generally anything that's got green is a source of nitrogen as it decays. Not to mention all of the uh, rhizomes that you have below the soil uh, from the, the root nodules of the pea plants themselves. So quite a bit of work out here to, to do that. Um, Yesterday, Tanya and I spent the entire day out here working on cleaning the area up. So, of course, the first thing I'm going to show you is stuff I, we didn't get to, just, just for the sake of showing you what the farm looks like these days. Um, but now that we've got the combination of the heat and the humidity, uh, the uh, growth has just exploded. I mean... Two weeks ago, these plants were not any taller than maybe a foot and a half. And uh, I'm looking across this field of snow, of, uh, of, of field peas. And uh, in some places, it's reaching up as high as five feet. But what I want to show you is how nice the growth has been on these apple trees. Every single one of them has leafed up beautifully. No indicators of uh, any of the trees being in distress, and we're very happy about that. I'm going to contrast what I just said about the health of these trees to something that we've noticed in two of the apple trees that we were planted in 2011. Um, we've got uh, some disease on these trees that we have to deal with. It's attributable to, uh, to either a fungus or bacterial infection, but the condition is uh, generally known as dieback. And uh, if you look, this is a uh, Granny Smith apple tree, and at the end of that branch, you can see that the leaves have um, have wilted and uh, turned brown. And the branches is actually uh, it, it, it's it's died. There's there's no more life coursing through that branch, and I'm a little concerned that the whole tree's affected. Granted, it's been dry. Um, problem is, I'm seeing an awful lot of this uh, on on several of these branches, and so the remedy is you prune off those branches that, that are showing the, the dieback. But if it's gone into the whole tree, 
the whole tree has to come out. And so we've got die back on this one and die back on that one. Uh, no signs of die back on this one yet. So that's the that's the bad news. That's, that's something that we've got to deal with. Um, cherries. This is the first time that we've ever seen cherries on these trees. This is the uh, North Star Pie Cherry Dwarf that we got in Starks in 2011. And you can see that it's starting to put out lots of cherries. This is the first year for that. This cherry tree, although it's uh, not that large, is also putting out cherry trees. Um, the growth on this one was just stunted, and, and I'm not sure why. Um, we hired somebody to put them in the ground for us, and we just don't know if they took time to make sure that the roots weren't wrapped around incorrectly. No cherries on this one. And what's this one? This is the Emperor Francis Sweet Cherry. No cherries on that one. This is the same thing, no cherries on that one. Peaches. We are getting peaches, but unfortunately the ants are too. Zoom out a little bit. So I did some reading and there's supposed to be a way that you can wrap some adhesive material around uh, the outside of the, uh, of the trunk and then put uh, a sticky ant trap on the tape so that the uh, ants will, will get stuck on the way out the, the trunk. Because these, uh, these trees where the ants are getting to them, we're seeing this right here. You see that? See that goo coming out? Oops, there we are. That's an ant has gotten in there. And that is the peach that's uh, kind of weeping from the inside. The only way I can put it. So, so it's doing it on that one. This tree, really, for as lush as it is, doesn't have anything. We never saw very many buds on that one either. And uh, it's doing it on this one. And yeah, we're going to call this one the Charlie Brown Peach Tree. Um, this little guy hasn't done that well over the years. And uh, our, uh, the thing that we wonder about is, while it may get enough sunlight, are there so many roots from this white oak that are just beneath the surface here getting all the food that this peach tree needs? So, that's a view of the house. I don't know the next time we'll have everything all trimmed up all at once. So we'll pan around and, and show you what we got. All things are still pretty.